Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Defrag. Asking the questions, questioning the answers. You come here to lay your truth on the table. Not just me, you. To be able to not confront yourself, because usually when we confront ourselves, it's usually out of anger or sadness. But basically to have a conversation, to have a relationship with that inner core and and being able to develop a conversation that really is about learning and teaching and being available. But if you have to have a confrontation, it, it's going to be no different than Gordon Ramsay. And he's just stepped into your dirty ass kitchen. And, and it's like, oh, well, what are we going to do now? We forgot to ask the questions and question the answers. This is Defrag. Today, we're going to hit a very deep subject. First of all, I am not a professional, but through experience, I've gone through a lot. And the subject that we're going to deal with is, are you instantly forgiven when you've been called home? You know what I mean by that, right? When you're called home, when you transition, when you pass away. Do we instantly forgive? What what happens in that situation? I've been through a lot of passings over the past five years. And uh, wow, uh, it's not what you expect. It's, it's you know, each, each one is much different than the other one. But you learn. But you have to understand that I'm a spiritualist. A spiritualist means that I don't look at death the way that other people look at death. Um, I, I don't go to funerals. And the reason why is because I believe in the continuation. That's the Buddhism, the studies of that, that's moving through me at all times. You know, it's like, wow, where did you show up? Where was your rebirth? I'm going to go find that out. But after losing my sister just a few days ago, it did occur to me, does this mean that I instantly forgive. I mean, because when it comes to marriage, isn't it till death do us part? Which I've never, never liked sharing that when when I am the efficient at a wedding. I don't like that because I want to believe that love lasts way longer than life and that the possibilities of there being love beyond what we know as a human being will continue. In fact, I wrote a song about that about how my wife wants her ashes spread in Carmel. And for the longest time, I wanted my ashes to be to be spread in Santa Barbara, California. And that the song was basically written about how the ashes moved out through the ocean and they came together. Somewhere out there in the middle of that ocean, our ashes met again. And during the way that nature works its way, Something happened. It sucked the water from the ocean to create the clouds that took a rainstorm to a mountainside. And from the mountainside, new life began. That's how I think. But the question on Defrag today is, is that when somebody passes, do you instantly forgive? And I think that what I need to be saying is, is that even in life... When things don't go the way that you want them to, you should instantly forgive. Forgiveness is such a tool in an age where we want to hold grudges, where we we don't mind being a little bit angry or, or to allow other people's emotions to kind of stand in the way of us finding peace. I once had a man tell me, he says, he says, I, I don't like you when you're happy. And I said, why? He goes, no, I, I like it when you're angry because you're edgier and, and you say things and, and you cuss. And, 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 and I like that. I like it when people can, can really kind of look at the world and be a little pissed off about it. But when, when you're happy, you, you're talking about, oh, my God, look at the daffodils today. Oh, man, did, did you hear that new song on the radio? And so I go back to, do we instantly forgive when the transition has taken place? And I'm pointing the finger to, let's see how we can do in forgiving before a transition takes place. We all make mistakes. I've said that a billion times on these podcasts. We all make mistakes. So turn them into a tool. Oh, well, that's easier said than done, right? You damn straight, it's easier said than done. Because it's just one of those things that when you start using the lessons that you've learned as a tool, as a physical presence in your decision making, for instance, the one thing that I've learned as I've gotten older in life is that I'm less of an argument waiting to happen. And I'm more of a, tell me your side of the story. 
In fact, I was with Dan Abrams from ABC today. He's got a brand new show that's that's on TV, and and basically it's the news. And the way that Dan talks about the show is that it's going to be his point of view, but he's got an expert panel, and he's going to look at them and say, did I get that right? I like that. I like having our own points of view, but we don't have to argue about it. We might disagree a little bit here and there, but it doesn't mean that we have to create a situation where, oh, crap, I got to forgive you now. Well, what did you do? I don't know. I just felt like that I went wrong somewhere, and now I've got to forgive you. But back to the original question. During the transition... Do you instantly forgive? And I bring this up because my sister and I, we, we had a love-hate relationship for nearly 60 years. Love-hate, on and off, constantly, on and off. And we even got to the point to where we, we made an agreement, is that, look, when, when one of us says that I have to go away for a couple of days, allow it to happen. Don't be getting pissed off. Don't be getting, you know, sad or anything like that. It means that we've spent too much time together and we, we, need, we need to work it out. But this last time, which was back in October of 2022, it wasn't being worked out. It was pretty much straight and forward that I I think this is it. After nearly 60 years, that that what you said to me and what I said to you, ah, you know, you, you just it's just it's not working out. And it's putting too much stress on a relationship here and that that. I don't like your points of view and you don't like my points of view. It ain't working. And so do you instantly forgive? Now, well, here's the thing is that I did instantly forgive while it was happening. And it's written in my defrag journals. It's written in my daily writing. So I, for those months between October of 2022 and this week, which was the third week of February in 2023, I waited for the phone call. The text message. Something. Well, I got I got a phone call from my other sister. She said your sister's gone. Instantly forgive, right? I think we should instantly forgive while we're alive. And when you do have those moments where things are really not going as well as you want, find a way to continue a new conversation. Don't run from where the anger was, because you know what? The thing is about anger, you're usually fighting about something that has nothing to do with what you're fighting about, that it's coming from a different source of energy. Sure, I'm disappointed that I didn't get to talk to my sister, because I kept hoping. Oh, I tried to call. The one thing I hate about modern-day phones? Blocking. Ghosting. You can't get through. Once you've been blocked, instantly forgiving after the transition, I think it should be before. I think it should be during our times of living, but it's going to take some work. I'm Arrow, and that's Defrag.